Good evening and welcome to the Health and Wellbeing Scrutiny Committee meeting of Tamworth Borough Council on 22nd of June 2022. Um, I'd like to welcome, um, well I'd like to have welcomed some new members of the committee but we only have one here this evening so that's Councillor Richard Kingston so welcome Councillor. And just saying um, thank you for the valuable contributions from the, um, the committee from last year who aren't standing on this committee this year, which was Councillor Jones, Councillor John Harper, Councillor John Wade and Councillor Sheree People and Councillor Danny Cook who stood in at our very last meeting. Um, I'd just like to remind members that the meeting's been recorded and will be available to view on YouTube. So thank you for any members of the public that are joining us this evening. Um, apologies. We receive apologies from Councillor Michelle Cook, Councillor Peter Thurgood, Councillor Maura Greatrex and Councillor Jan Woodrup. Um, we have checked and we are quiet. We have enough people to hold the meeting. Um, I'll move on to item two, which is an appointment of the vice chair. I'd like to nominate Councillor Dan Maycock as, um, as vice chair. Do we have a seconder for that? Thank you, Councillor T Thomas J. Can we have a show of hands on that, please? Thank you. So, Councillor Maycock, thank you. Um, minutes of the previous meeting, item three on the agenda. Um, that's the meeting held on the 29th of March 2022. They're here for approval. I wasn't in attendance at that meeting. Councillor Maycock chaired that meeting. Um, the meeting minutes have been published for some time now and we haven't received any comments, have we? Um, so we're going to take those as a, a true record and get Councillor Maycock to sign those for us. Thank you. Item four, declarations of interest. Um, can I ask if we have any declarations of interest this evening? That takes us on to item five, which is the housing strategy update. Um, unfortunately, the relevant officers weren't able to make the um, make the meeting this evening, and actually, I don't think it was quite ready for us to um, for it to be presented to us. So we're referring that to our next meeting, which I think is the twelfth of July. Eleven. The 11th no, of no, sorry. 12th. 12th of July. So, um, so the appropriate portfolio holder and officers will be invited to that meeting to do that presentation. Moving on to item six, um, I have a couple of things that I, I'd like to um, update you on. I have handed out um, a draft letter from the leader that is going to go to the board of the MPFT. Um, they're due to have a meeting on the 30th of June and potentially, um, potentially that a recommendation is going to be made proposing that George Bryan is closed down. Um, the papers haven't actually been published yet. I believe they go on tomorrow evening. Do you say tomorrow? Soon. Yeah, soon. So as soon as they're there, we will know whether this is actually going to the board on that date. But in advance of that, um, I've spoken with the leader. I'd like to put together a letter from myself and this committee um, also going forward to support the leader and um, the MP councillor Pincher has also written a letter to the board. Um, so I'm looking for some ideas on that, please. Councillor Jay. I just want to say um, totally agree with that, totally agree with the leader's point that it's opportunistic and it doesn't cater for Tamworth and its residents. They should be thinking about the South East of Staffordshire. So I totally fully support that and be happy to sign anything as well. Just Thank you. Anybody? Yeah, Councillor Kingston. 
Thank you. Yeah, totally agree with the letter that's been presented this evening from the leader and also in total agreement with the comments that uh, our MP Chris put into his letter that he published um, last week or the week before. We clearly need to um, ensure that Tamworth residents and those in Burton-upon-Trent as well and uh, surrounding areas are well serviced and the closure of the George Bryan Centre is not good for Tamworth, not good for Tamworth residents, and so we need to make sure we do as much as we can to ensure it uh, continues. Absolutely, I couldn't, I couldn't agree more. Um, Councillor Michael. Thank you. Uh, just to go a bit further from uh, the comments that the leader and uh, the MPs given in their letters, uh, being an active participant in the consultations that have been going on through the last year, two years, uh, it's quite evident that all the residents that have taken part in them consultations want to see the inpatient facilities back at George Bryant on top of the community services that they're going to be installing. Uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you for that. Councillor Jai. Sorry, one, one other thing. I, th I think it's right, but it's also... It, I think if, if you take this away and everyone accepts that, it's just one less service and one step towards it not being there at all. And that's even worse for Tamworth. And I think this is just one step in, in that direction if we let it happen um, before it ends up being closed. So, you know, it's about not just protecting this particular bit, it's about protecting the whole whole facility for Tamworth, I think. And really, it should be being invested into to grow for what Tamworth needs, not being looked um, to get rid of it. Thank you for that. Any more comments? No? So, committee is happy for me to put something together in draft and circulate it amongst the committee for comments. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I did. I think it's it's the thin end at the edge of the wedge, really. I mean, it, what other services are they going to start looking at? And you know, once we start chopping one which is a very vital one, especially at the moment. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Item 7. Um, at the last meeting, 29th of March meeting, uh, the committee repeated the recommendation that had gone to cover previously, that it consider another location other than that of the assembly rooms for interim front of house customer services as quickly as possible. Um, this had been to cabinet before, but committee weren't weren't happy with the response that we received, so it went back again. So. At, on the 9th of April at the Cabinet meeting, the leader updated that he had authorised improved signage to the front of Marmion House to signpost to different routes to get in touch with the council, including face-to-face, -face, further as part of the Reset and Recovery Programme update. Also approved the provision of continued face-to-face -face reception and signposting arrangements from Tamworth Information, Information Centre until new council premises are opened in 2023. And delegated authority to the Deputy Chief Executive in conjunction with the Portfolio Holder Finance, Risk and Customer Services to keep the above under review and, where necessary, agree a revised customer service and reception arrangement should evidence and customer engagements result for any change. Um, yeah, that's all well and good, but we'd like to see something back, I think, in maybe six months to show us what evidence they have got and, and what sort of responses we are getting from the public. Um, any comments? Thank you. Yeah, just to say, um, I mean, this was touched on at the scrutiny committee last night, um, and it's something that's been looked at, I think, the end of June to, to look for a location. And one thing that was brought up there, which I think is, is relevant to what you were saying there, is that it's not just about noting the number of people that have gone to the assembly rooms to then say, is that the number of people that use it and therefore is it worth it? Because how many people don't go there because they don't know it or they don't feel comfortable going there? 
So just taking a tally on the door there is not a true reflection of, of users. So um, that needs to be kept front and front of uh, mind when looking at it. Councillor Kingston. Yeah, I think it's important um, that we look at public perception with regards to this because the perception is that, rightly or wrongly, but this is what I'm hearing, is that um, Marmion House is closed when it is effectively closed to uh, visitors but services are still being delivered and that needs to have a piece of work attached to it so that the public clearly understand the transition that's going on at the moment and that they know where to go to access their services. We can, as a council, trumpet as till we're blue in the face that the, they go to the assembly rooms, but if that's not what they think or even believe, then it's pointless continuing in that vein. Something else needs to be looked at. So it would be interesting to see some work done to justify the assembly rooms being the point of contact at the moment and to see how effective that is. Thank you, Councillor Kingston. Councillor Michael. Um, it, it was myself that took that back to uh, Cabinet. Um, and just touching on uh, your point, Councillor Jai, the it, understand that people, when they go into that facility, won't necessarily realise that there are private rooms that they can go and sp speak about. But then again, it's, it, it, it's to Councillor Kingston's point that the public need to know. And like you say, we can say it as much as we like, but that clearly isn't getting through with the evidence base that was given to us at the previous meeting. So with the big posters that have gone outside Marmion House, has there been an increase in people going to the assembly rooms? What for? And again, the same point is, is that just the tip of the iceberg? Are there, there are more people out there that just don't feel the assembly rooms? is appropriate. It may be for us as a council, but it isn't for residents, and that's where we need to look at. Yeah, I totally agree with all of that. Um, I'm just wondering whether we, when we get to the um, to the work plan, whether we might get some sort of working group going and see if we can find out you know, from residents what their perception is. I think we know what their perception is, but if we could do that. So if we hang that over until the, the work plan and then we'll consider doing that. Thank you. On to agenda item eight, consideration of matters referred to the Health and Wellbeing Scrutiny Committee from Cabinet or Council. I'm not aware of any. On to agenda item nine, Update on health-related matters considered by Staffordshire County Council. Um, there were three written updates attached to the agenda, so I hope everybody's had the opportunity to have a look at those, um, which provide an overview of all of those meetings, the 15th of March, 11th of April and 30th of May. Um, I don't know, as the um, County Councillor Rep, whether Councillor Jay wants to give us an update on any of those. Yep, sure, thank you. So I suppose the update really from the, the last meeting was that the, there was a lot of focus on uh, on KPI, so metrics on, you know, are people getting treatment on time, are they getting it within the um, targets, um, and what's, what are waiting times and what are, what's been done to, to reduce them. Um, so there's some scary figures in there, pretty much not everything, but pretty much everything is red. We all know red is bad, green is good, right? That's pretty much everything is red. And um, there were people waiting, I can't remember now if it's 104 or 124 weeks for, for treatment, and that was a target. So they're trying to get that to zero. So that in itself is scary, right? People waiting that long. So we're talking two years, um, over two years. Um, and we're talking about getting that down to zero by the end of the year to then look at those that are waiting, I think it's 78 weeks or 74 weeks, um, which is really, really scary. Obviously, they aren't the emergency ones, they're the sort of more routine, but still, that's people waiting at home 
with that hanging over them for years. And the, the, main, the main reason behind it was workforce, so lack of people, right? lack of staff, and they talked through what they're doing about that. Um, and then the other item that didn't come up in that meeting, but it's being brought to another meeting, which is probably, the num my view, the number one issue, and that is ambulance waiting times. Um, we've all seen in the news, you know, people waiting an hour, two hours, if they can get an ambulance. And that came up, and it's not just about the ambulances, it's, again, it's about the workforce, it's about having the people at the hospital end to, phys to get the people off the ambulances. So you've got ambulances queuing and waiting up, they're just stuck there with a patient, they can't go out to somebody else. But it all pin um, points back to that same workforce issue that they're focusing on. Um, so that's coming back again later in the year to see if they are genuinely hitting their targets they told us about. And then the ambulance service is coming in as a separate agenda item in, it, in itself as well. So that's really the focus at the moment. We're happy to take any questions if anyone's got any questions. Yeah, of course. No? Um, there was um, a healthier communities workshop was this yesterday. Yeah, yesterday um, I called it the wider determinants of, of health, um, which I couldn't attend. So Councillor Maycock attended in my absence. So if you'd like to give us an overview on that, that'd be great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so like the chair just said. Um workshop yesterday uh, it was about the water determinants of health and how to bring about healthier communities uh, there was loads of suggestions flying around uh, from all parties officers uh, and members and I think the one of the main focuses moving forward is going to be health in every policy uh, where the county have now got a dedicated officer, public health officer, that he's going to be looking at health in every policy. Um, there's also conversations around how we as a committee can input into the planning cycle which we're going to be going through uh, quite soon and, uh, and how we can in put input in into the, the new local plan that's going to be produced. Uh, and a, a thing that always came up last year on this committee was communications. And again, that was mentioned by everybody at the workshop yesterday, how are the public health officers getting that message to the residents? Uh, so, so I suggested that we, as a council, are quite good at working in partnerships with the local volunteer sector and the uh, charitable organisations. And I think the county could utilise that across the county because that's where the residents are, are, are at, basically. So, and I also suggested that a perception that some of the public might have is they may trust these charitable organisations a little bit more than they would a council. So if they're putting the message across as well as us, it's a big team, team effect. Um, also, what was the last bit? No, that's it. Thank you for that update. Um, yeah, we'll move on to there was um, there's an actual policy, isn't there? Now they've got the strategy, haven't they? Um, so we'll look at that when we get to our, our working plan. That's fine. Um, any questions for Councillor Maycock? No. Okay. Move on to item ten, which is the forward plan. Um, I've had a look at this and I couldn't see anything that I particularly wanted to um, bring forward, but I don't know whether the, any other committee want to um, want to look at anything. No? Okay. Gosh, this is going quick. Um, right, we move on to the scrutiny work plan then. Um, basically, this is just 
it's the first meeting of this year. We have got a few things on there that have <coughs> followed over from last year, but I'd just like to invite any, everybody to um, to offer some suggestions and comments um, about <coughs> what we want to have on the plan for this year. We've got... Um, for the next meeting, we've already got the housing strategy, the health and housing strategy coming because it's been deferred until the next meeting. Um, we've got community health services transformation pathways to care in Tamworth, substance misuse and addiction, young people's experiences in Tamworth, loneliness, isolation, Overview of services available to rough, rough sleepers and homeless people in town, which I think comes later in the year, doesn't it? Yeah. Do we know what when that is? Yeah, well, I think yeah, it's later in the year. So, uh, green and open spaces, attainment and skills. Um, I'll stop there and see if anybody wants to come in and. Make any suggestions, Councillor Joe. <clears throat> um, I know we talked about sending a letter to accompany this George Bryant Centre letter, but do you think that should be something we we add as a, as a point on here to you know? Because I think whatever whatever tools we've got at our disposal to try and pressure them, we're from to try and use one of those is calling them in here to sort of give them a, a bit of a public grilling, whether they'll accept, whether they'll come or not is. Is debatable, but I think we should at least um, perhaps try and try and do that. I don't know what everyone else thinks, but I think we should use every tool we've got at our disposal. And one of them is, is bring them in here to grill them. Yeah, oops, sorry, I keep catching that. So we could look at that under the community health services, couldn't we, transformation? Um, yeah, I presume it'd be a a member of the um, of the trust that we'd call in. So, yeah, we can certainly look at doing that. What sort of date would we like to put on that? Oh, Councillor Maycox. Thank you, Chair. <laughs> I think we should have both the community pathway who's been to this committee before and the inpatient pathway in together, as Councillor Jay says, so... so that they can't hide away from each other then. It's 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 in open forum and that they can speak to the residents uh via YouTube on, on the decisions that they're they're making in regards to Tamworth. Yeah, I think that's a great suggestion that we get them in at the same time. So um I know it would be up a car that we have in from the the one from the community, but I'm not sure who it will be from the other side. So we need to do a bit of digging and find out who that is. And I would say as soon as possible. Yes. Yeah. And um, bearing in mind that we've got, we've already got something on for the following meeting, but doesn't stop us having them in at the same time. I was just going to suggest to give time because we're only talking. What is it? The fourth of July. Whatever date it is, 12th of July, just to give time to give the next but one meeting. That way you can identify the correct people and give them notice so they can't come back and say, oh, you only didn't give us, you didn't give us enough notice so we can't come in. And I, I, I can't remember, but I think it's September time, the, uh, the, the, the next but one meeting. So can I suggest next but one? Um, I know that'll be past the date that we think that the decision is going to be made. But at least then, as has been suggested by others, they can be brought in and publicly uh, be held to account for any decisions that they may have made by then. Jay? Yeah, I agree with that. Um, like I said, I think it's limited what we can do. We have to show we, we, we're doing everything we can. Um, the other suggestion would be perhaps leave, suggest that meeting but give them a bit of flexibility. So if they, you know, if they suggest a date they can make on a week before or a week after, I'm sure we'd all be open to being flexible and Absolutely. switching it around. Um, so then there's no excuse then to go, well, we couldn't come on that date and they weren't flexible, or well, we will. That's that sort of thing, we give them that option. Any other comments? I was gonna 
<laughs> yeah, don't forget your mic. Yeah, we can always put an extra meeting in if we need to. Um, yeah, so we all in agreement that that's the way forward. Yes. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Potentially that would be August then, wouldn't it? Do we have a meeting in August? I don't. We don't always have one, do we? The next meeting is the 22nd of September. Mm. Um, was I to try and contact that meeting, but see if, if that was no good, see if there's anything else? Yes, yeah, some, something either side of that. that. Yeah. yeah, just bearing in mind the other meetings that we have. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. Is there any, any other items, Councillor Kingston? I was just going to say, um, being new to this committee, what was the general focus for putting on here young people's experiences in Tamworth? Can anybody add any depth? It's in the same section, mental health and wellbeing. Yeah, I think that came um, came from the, not last year, from the previous year. And I think there was some work done. I think there was um, a working group on that. Um, I'll have to look at that for you and get back to you on that, if that's okay, Richard. Yeah, but I'm sure there was a working group on it. And, and just on the back of that, you've got down there attainment and skills in Tamworth. And I think that's something that ties into well-being quite, quite well, because um, we've spoken for years and years and years um, in various scrutiny committees about a potential brain drain in Tamworth and opportunities for young people to get the uh, skills at whatever level, whether that be at T level, whether it be at um, A level, whether it be at apprenticeship level here in Tamworth without having to travel miles and miles and miles away. Um, I just think that it would be great to see something like that worked on especially with the fantastic college move taking place mm -hmm. and the facilities that are likely to be on offer there to reinforce uh, the message that Tamworth has, a terrific offer for young people, and to um, tie that in with promoting what we've got to ensure that our young people and employers know that we've got a wonderful opportunity here in Tamworth or if we haven't got a wonderful opportunity here, what we can do to ensure that we do have a wonderful opportunity. Okay, thank you, Councillor Kingston. From my recollection, not last year, but a couple of years ago when I was on this committee, and I think Roy, and I think even yourself may have been on it, that was an item that was just rolled over many times, if I remember rightly. Just, just to add, I think it's time to stop rolling over yeah. because with what's <laughs> yeah. happening with the co-op side, I was side, going to go on to say we that we need to say <laughs> let's stop yeah. it now and yeah. just get on and, and celebrate what we've got and promote it and find out what we need to offer mm. and to encourage people to come here and offer it. Mm. Uh, yeah, I agree. I think the um, the pandemic put a, a bit of a skewed balling for everything but yes I, I know that that one has been on the um the, the topics for a long time um any suggestions as to how we can get the information in councillor kingston i suppose the only way is to form a small working group mm. and to see if that working group could go off and talk to the various providers, whether it be the Sixth Form Centre, whether it be the Tamworth um, South Staffs College, um, plus all the other. I know there are many small individual private, prov not private, but small providers dotted around the, both the town centre and the industrial estates. What's the apprenticeship offer? Uh, speak to people from the local education authority who have all that through Entrust. And, um, and move things forwards from there. Thank you. Um, have we got some volunteers for that working group then, please? I'm assuming you would like to be on that, Councillor Kingston? More than happy to get involved. Councillor Maycock? Anybody else? Well, maybe put it out to the, the other members of the committee um, in an email and see if anybody else wants to go forward with that. So. 
Are you happy to head that up? Mm -hmm. If the rest of the committee are, so I do have a bit of a, 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 a an, bit of an understanding of, of who to speak to on this. Mm -hmm. Okay, no okay. problem. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Michael. Uh, just going back to the George Bryan conversation, I was just looking at the county's uh, work plan and they've got uh, a George Bryan agenda on the 11th of July and I'm sure that that is going to be the business uh, proposals uh, which are going to be put forward to, to county at that point. So. I think the, le the letters need to go off quite soon. Yeah, I think Tom is of the essence, isn't it? I mean, that's the day before our next meeting. So, um, so yeah, I'll get on that. I mean, if, if any committee members have any ideas or suggestions to put into the correspondence, then if you can email me, um, and then I can make sure that that's put together and circulated for everybody to have a look at before it goes off. Um, the other items we have on here were we've got the wider determinant. Sorry, that's all right. Thank you. Um, just going back to the, the young people's experience in Tamworth. I just say if if no one can really remember what it was, probably remove it or link it into the attainment of skills. You know what is young people's experiences of the offer and what, where they have to go. You might speak to sixth formers, what are they doing, or, you know, people leaving, um, uh, what year is it now, year, what's the last year, year 13? Year. Is it 13 before yeah. you get to, yeah. You know, what's their experience of where they have to go? Um, maybe you link the two together. And then the other thing I was going to mention was just some of these things like um, the, the housing strategy and uh, homelessness, stuff like that. Obviously, there's that new housing and social housing and homelessness prevention committee now so it might be worth um if it's not already just joining up with that a little bit to see what's coming out of that what changes are coming out of that and then you know using this almost as a uh, an addition to that to tr try and see the 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 well you know the well-being side of those changes that are being proposed i suppose okay thank you for that anybody else no Councillor Michael. Uh, yeah, just looking at the substance misuse and addiction uh, header in the mental health and wellbeing, um, I'm aware of a quite new um, charity in Lichfield that are hoping to expand into Tamworth, uh, and I think it'd be good to, to, to hear their their story and their ambitions in coming into the borough uh, and how the they want to help the residents of Tamworth. Uh, if I could put an invitation out to them to come in. Yeah, the the charity is called uh, Better Way, and the one of the uh, directors is a chap called Pete. Um, but jo Joe Sands knows knows all yeah. about him. Okay. I wanted to actually look at the one that we've been talking about again for at least 12 months. The wider determinants, including diet, food, vulnerability and healthy, health, healthy eating. Um, I'm not really quite sure how we, how we go about this. Um, I mean, it's, it's really high on the agenda at the moment healthy eating and food vulnerability. Um, we can get some somebody perhaps from the um, from Sacred Heart to come in or CIC to speak to us about this and see what, what they are actually doing and whether there's more that can be done. Um, I don't know if anybody has any comments on that. Councillor Maycock. Thank you, Chair. Uh, uh, yeah, it is really high on the agenda, but but I, th I think it's it's how we as a council can affect that 
uh, apart from information, advice, and guidance, and and what 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 else we can do. Um, I'm struggling to see it, um, but I don't know what other people's views are. Uh, and obviously, it's something that I would like to help with, but how to help? That's that's the, the question. Mm. Councillor Kingston. With my work hat on, um, I head up something called personal development. Uh, which looks at the, um, amongst many things, RSHE, relationship, sex and health education. And um, healthy eating is now a very big statutory requirement for all schools, both primary and secondary, to address. So any work that's done on that, um, although you've got the statutory organisation, such as Ofsted and... Um, <clears throat> the um, various um, multi-academy trusts governing boards ensuring that schools meet their um, requirements for delivering everything that's there health diet food vulnerability healthy eating um, all that sort of stuff should be covered at an education at, at, at a school level at all levels within school both at sixth form and and a level provision as well um, so any work that's done, I think, doesn't just need to look at what the voluntary sector is doing, but because we are um, scrutinising what's going on within the borough, we need to get some input to make sure that the schools have some sort of joined up approach. So whatever's going on in school A should tie in and fit with whatever's going on in school B. I know I've, today I've been in a quite a lengthy session and discovered that um, not necessarily going to name any school, but we do have um, disparity between what some primary schools are providing and what some secondary schools are providing, when really, from a town-wide approach, we need to be making sure there's a joined-up working across all schools, both primary and secondary, to ensure that uh, the messages get out to everybody, and that way then you can also filter into the family units as well. Um, by ensuring that if the children know, then you can get messages out to the parents as well. It's just another route. Yeah, thank you for that. I mean, I, I do agree with Councillor Maycott that it, it, I don't know how we get that message out and how we um, get that information in. Um, maybe we move that one on to on to our next um, session on the work plan because I think we've got quite a, quite a bit on there at the moment to be going forward with but just keeping that in mind um, that we will want to look at that at some point because I don't want that to just roll on and on again. Um, Armed Forces Covenant, this will be you Mr Maycock. <laughs> Thanks Chair. Uh, I, I think that a working group can be formed now uh, that there's actually been a uh, cabinet member associated with that that topic um, so it'd be interesting to uh, speak to councillor clements and find out her ideas and what, what, what her plans are in the upcoming year and, and then uh, after that maybe get her in to speak to us and what her and any associated officers are doing in regards to that. Okay, thank you. So should we put in a TBA to be advised on that one? When we can, when we can get a, a date from Tina and again, moving it along a little bit to make right because we also have some statutory ones that we have to put in as well. So, has anybody else got any anything else they want to discuss on the work plan? Councillor Maycroft. Uh, a thing that's really important to me is um, emergency care um, and, pro and primary care. So specifically about CPR, it's such a simple thing to do, which gives so many benefits and the, the, the utter chance of survival um, 
which was uh, brought in to be put into schools, I think, in 2020. Um, and uh, going back on what Councillor uh, Kingston said about maybe getting the schools in to see how they're, that they're, they're not disjointed, but I'm, I'm, I'd be interested to see how they're getting on with implementing this new guidance and what avenues uh, from Heart or the British Heart Foundation on are the schools reaching out to these charities or organisations to get their input into the schools and are they using their uh, equipment because there are there is equipment that schools can get from the, these organisations to, to teach kids CPR. Yeah, thank you for that. I think that's a, a really important one. Is that something that we could put into the working group that we've already set up? Um, it probably is overloading you a little bit, but what do you feel about that? Um, it's it's knowing what I know in so much as with the other hat of mine on as one of the trustees of the Tamworth Have a Heart, which is the defibrillator charity, um, Keith Dawson. Um, always, always pesters every single school around October the 18th because that's um, the British Heart Foundation's special day for promoting um, CPR and defibrillators. There's two different things you've got to remember. You, you will know this, that a heart attack is very different to a cardiac arrest. And a defibrillator is great for cardiac arrest, but is useless if you've had a heart attack because the, def the heart attack is simply a blockage. I say simply, it's, 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 it's a horrible thing to have happen. Um, but the point I'm trying to make is, is that schools now have a statutory obligation to talk about defibrillation and CPR, and they have to have started delivering it across um, to ensure that every student is CPR trained and trained to use a defibrillator, well, not trained, but knows how to use a defibrillator um, from 2020. So that's, I know, is already happening from a statutory point of view across the schools. What would be brilliant is given the fact that we've got so many publicly accessible defibrillators and so many groups that take advantage of the uh, CPR training that Keith Dawson delivers, is we need to make sure that as many people in Tamworth as possible um, engage in some way with that. Now that might be a case of finding some sort of charitable fund to facilitate a venue and training facilities. For example, at Rawlett, we've got over 100 resource annies that we loan out to other schools that were donated to us through the British Heart Foundation. They could easily be used in, in other environments because they're designed to be used by everybody, not just the particular school it was administered to. So we do have a massive resource here in Tamworth that could be tapped into. It's just a case of publicly tapping into it and saying to everybody, don't be frightened of that yellow box on the wall. Don't be frightened to get stuck in if somebody drops. You need to start to deliver CPR as quickly as you can because it will and does save lives. So I would suggest, yes, I can bring it into that, that school's look at, um, but I don't think it's the schools that we need to be focusing on. I think it's the wider community to make sure that they have the opportunity to engage in high quality, relevant training in both defibrillators and CPR. How we would go about that, I'm not quite sure, but I think it's going to involve a little bit of cash investment from somewhere to um, ensure that we've got the premises available to deliver it. I mean, I know Keith has delivered it in here, so, you know, it, it can be done anywhere. It's just a case of time. Thank you for that. Did you sign Keith Dawson? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think I've met Keith on a few occasions. And does he just provide the, the training himself? Well, I mean, it can be done through two ways. Um, I know that through Tamworth Have a Heart, which is the charity mm. that we set up to provide publicly accessible defibrillators, um, Keith and uh, the team go out into uh, community groups and for a small donation um, to cover Keith's petrol and, and running costs, he will um, provide CPR training. However, if you're talking about it on a large scale, mm -hmm. it's, it would be a little bit more than a, than a, mm -hmm. than a small donation mm -hmm. to cover his, mm -hmm. his running costs. 
So if you're talking about on a large scale, it would require some form of financial investment mm -hmm. to deliver it. But having said that, we do have the expertise right here in the borough to ensure mm -hmm. that those services and, and, and sessions can be delivered efficiently and effectively. Okay, thank you for that. Councillor Maycott, did you have anything to add to that? Thanks, Chair. Um, yeah, uh, as many people trained in CPR, the better. And if it can be looked at in venues using, like Councillor Kingston says, what we've got in the borough and how many resource alleys are just sitting there waiting to be, uh, be used and uh, have CPR practice on them, then they that, that need to be used because they will save lives. I can make a suggestion then that um, I speak to Keith and see if he has any suggestions about how we can um, how we can put this together. Just to speed up the process, on Monday I will be at a Tamworth Have a Heart meeting with Keith and the other committee members. I can bring it to the committee then to see if there's anything uh, that can be done from through the charity. And um, if not through the charity, if Keith's prepared to look at options available through his business. Okay, thank you. Can I ask the other members of the committee of their views on that? Councillor yeah, If you mean him on Monday, we might as well start the conversation then. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Um, I think that concludes everything on the work plan, unless anybody else has got anything else to, to add to that. No. So our next meeting is on the 12th of July. Um, I've got myself a note to start putting together a letter for um, to send off to the board, the MPFT. And I'm going to close the meeting at 18.45. And thank you all for attending.